Hello, I've got a cold again, so I thought, what the hell, it's time to record another Microtik 2 tutorial. So here we go. This one, we're going to do a CHR install on ESXi. ESXi is the free offering from VMware, um, so you can get to grips with virtualization. Um, it's very powerful, um, incredibly easy to use as well. So we're, we're going to go straight ahead with it um, and, and go from there. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your hands on a copy of the CHR um, disk, if you like. You can get this uh, from Microtik's website. So just go to www.microtik.com and you'll find it if you click in the software and then scroll your way down. Uh, past all the normal packages that Routeros comes with for the various different hardwares that Microtik produce and just down here at Cloud Hosted Router. Now there are a few different options here but for what we're going to do uh, you, in ESXi you need an OVA template which is this one here so simply click that and away it goes. So once that's downloaded it will sit in your downloads folder. Uh, I already have a copy of it here and I've now got another copy of it. So what we're going to do is import that straight into ESXi. So log into your ESXi host. Uh, I use 6.5. It's the most up-to-date and it has a nice snazzy web UI as opposed to the stupid old client. Um, we're going to go straight down into virtual machines and create slash register VM. From here, normally you would click, click new machine and hit next and set all your parameters in there. But we're just going to go deploy from OVF or OVA. So we're going to hit next. Uh, a name for this virtual machine, we're going to go for Routeros um, YouTube video. Uh, and then we need to drag and drop our file there. So I'm going to open my file manager, drag and drop the file hit next. Decide what storage medium you want to put it on. I've got a few different ones in this machine but it can go in ESXi stuff. Normally you may have data store one, two or, or disks of your, your naming there. Uh, and then map your network. So on this CHR it has one Ethernet uh, interface as standard. Um, mine is just called VM network. You've probably got names for yours. Map it to whatever na network you want. Uh, disk provisioning, there's be nothing to stop you going it from thick because it's going to be a very small disk, but I always leave it on thin. Hit next, and it will say, yeah, do you want to do this? Pff, of course I do. Now, it will go ahead and create the virtual machine. It'll be a little bit slow on this because my vhost is a little bit old. It's one of the old microservers, and you can just see it chugging away there. Now, what we're going to do now is we're just going to click into it. Um, so we can see what's going on with it. The important thing to do before it boots is stop it from booting. Um, the reason for this is, as you can see, as it imports, it has a single CPU with a 128 meg disk and a 128 meg RAM. That's fine and it will do for a basic router if you're going to virtualize and, and just get to grips with Routeros. But if you actually want to deploy this, when it first starts, it resizes the disks and things. And you want to get it right from the start. So as you can see now, those two have completed. And my host should actually start itself any second now. Awkward silence. Okay, so power off. Yes. Gone. Done. Dismiss you. So now we're going to want to go in. Actions, edit settings. So you can set anything you like here. Um, my host has two, it's a dual core, so I'm going to stick it to two. Uh, memory, I want it to have <clears throat> lots of memory and the hard disk. I'm going to go absolutely mental and I'm going to give it a gig of memory. In fact, what the hell, let's give it a gig of RAM as well. Everything else can stay as it is. We're going to hit save. And at that point then, hooray, we're done. Click go. Bosh. So now the virtual machine is going to start. As you can see here, it'll sit on loading system for a few seconds, unless you have a stupidly high performance machine, um, at which point then it'll boot up. Um, it'll generate a couple of SSH keys, and it'll it'll just boot into its kind of main uh, Microtik command line interface. At this point, 
There we go, it's just resized the disk, you see. Uh, at this point now, what I would say is if you open Winbox and you start searching, I mean, you can see neighbors here, this is all the stuff on my local network, and hit refresh a few times, it'll scan itself out. So up here, sorry, up here, <laughs> in the black uh, command line box, Routeros is started and it's running. However, if I refresh this, it doesn't come up. Uh, even though it's on the same layer two network, it, it, for some reason it it will not come up. Um, I'm not too sure why that is. I thought you should be able to discover it and get it by Mac. Maybe someone knows who's slightly more clever than me. Uh, so we actually want to access this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop into the shell. Default admin login is admin and there is no password. So I'm going to hit enter again. Uh, do you want to see the software license? No, I don't. So we're in, we're on the command line. Um, at this point, can we see it yet? Uh, I don't think we can. No, we can't. So back into my command line and we're going to go forward slash IP space DHCP hyphen client space add space INT. I'm going to hit tab to complete that for me. And I know that my interface is called internet, yeah, interface ether1. Hit enter. Great. We've got an IP address. Uh, now, but I want to know what the IP address is. So forward slash IP space ADD tab it print. So IP address now for this box is 10.10.10.63 slash 24. That means I can open up Winbox and go to 10.10.10.63. Login name is going to be admin. Password is going to be blank. Hit continue. And we're in. So that's it. Uh, at that, Routeros is loaded. Um, you have a fully working MicroTik router in your hands. You will see that there are some funky packages installed as standard. Dude server for one. Uh, but you can go into system, packages, uh, and you can switch stuff off, disable it, UPS, wireless, uh, unless you're going to be using Caps1, you can, you can disable that. Uh, and of course, the most important thing is going to system, password, and set yourself a password. Um, the CHR itself will work indefinitely in this as it is just now however you will probably notice that your traffic will only go one way it'll be I think it's one meg one way and 100 meg or gigabit the other um, to get around that what you need to do is you need to go into system license and you want to generate new ID yep. and then you want to hit OK and renew that's it so we're going to go into renew license and at this point you type in your MicroTik account uh, I have a MicroTik account here and the password for that hit level P1 hit start and what will happen is your renewal date and your deadline date will fill in at that point your CHR is registered for 60 days and you will have 60 days of unlimited usage unlimited upgrades and all your interfaces will go at full speed which is gigabit or whatever it is um, it is worth noting after that date goes you will get the tick on limited upgrades now that doesn't mean that it will stop working all it means is when you go to system packages and you check for updates you won't be able to update um, that's about as much as it goes. Uh, feel f you can from here do everything. You can move around through the different packages. Uh, you can add VPN interfaces. You, you can do anything that you would normally do with Routeros. Uh, and that's about it. So if you've got any questions or any kind of weird configs and where this hasn't worked for you, please let me know. Thank you for watching. And um, yeah, please feel free to like, comment uh, and have a look at a few more of the marketing videos that I've recorded. Thank you.